There we go. Well, <laughs> welcome everybody to World Youth Day Rocks. I am Dario from WorldYouthDay.com, joined by my good friend Deacon Pedro from WIDCentral.org. Talking about all things World Youth Day today on this beautiful Friday. We are one year away from Lisbon. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Yes. And uh, and everybody's hopefully getting excited about how soon we can start getting registered. That's right. So I, I just got word that registrations will begin very soon. Uh, well, first, we have to get through the summer of August. As you all yeah. know, August is a terrible month for anybody in Europe because nobody's around. So everybody goes on vacation in August. But when they come back in September, I'll guarantee you the fall is going to be the time to pay attention to the registrations that are going to occur on their website. Yes. So Lisbon2023.org or Lisboa2023.org. Go there. Keep going there. Keep checking out. If you don't see anything in English, it's always a good exercise to try the Portuguese version. And maybe you'll be able to figure out that sometimes there's a little more information in their local language than there is in other languages. So uh, that would be my advice. Go yeah. to uh, or even Spanish, you can check out. But right now, there's not a lot of new information in English. No. Um, not yet, but there will be. But there just, will be. Yes. And stay tuned because, you know, one of the things that they you have to understand, and as we are one year away, a lot of details will come out very soon. And when a lot of those details come out, it might be overwhelming as, at the time too, to think like, well, well, we know where the final vigil and the mass will be. And I will reveal that too very shortly in this show. But at the same time, like some of you guys might be individually planning to go on, on this World Youth Day experience, or some of you might be going with a tour operator. The nice thing is like most likely most tour operators will be the ones helping you with the registration yes. rather than having you register by yourself. I mean, it is a lot of work. You got to pick up the credentials. It's a lot of work when you get on site, as Deacon Pedro can tell you. We are celebrating 20 years since Toronto. And uh, Deacon Pedro has a lot of experience with the registration and the collection of credentials and all that fun stuff because oh, he was great. What are you talking about? Everybody had great. a great time picking up their credentials. Actually, I think that that was, oh, look at that. You still have credentials. Those. There is World Youth Day from 20 years ago credential. Anyways. Um, That's great. No, um, Toronto actually did the credentials pretty. There were other problems in Toronto, but the credential picking up was, was great <laughs> because they set up these hubs near the airport and near uh border crossings so people could arrive go straight to to this like warehouse or this conference center and 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 get registered pick up their bags pick up their badges pick up everything immediately before even going to their to where they were staying or their accommodation site um that was not the case in other world youth days no um, no not always and i'm not i mean there, there's always going to be problems somewhere but I, i'll never forget sydney the lineups of having to because the place was just not big enough and they we shut down a whole street because there were just so many people lining up um all day <laughs> all day i'm not exaggerating all day and what would you say well, on average like what people should be expecting when they do arrive on site and pick up registration or in general well i think that if it's if it's uh organized the way it's usually done um, as soon as you, well, first of all, the, the committee knows you're arriving because there's someone whose job is or a whole department whose job is, is to, to keep track of pilgrims and where they're arriving. Um, sometimes it's organized by by languages so that there's one department making sure that all the Spanish speakers or the, all the Latin Americans and all the someone in charge of all the English speakers, it might even be done by by uh, by conferences so there might be someone in charge a whole department in charge of just the pilgrims that are coming from the united states or just the pilgrims coming from france for example um and then you will be you will know where to go as soon as you arrive and you should be able to pick up your credentials as soon as you arrive now it doesn't mean like if you're traveling with a group of 300 people doesn't mean that all 300 of you hopefully that's not how they're setting it up hopefully the group leader can just go yeah. and yeah. pick up and sometimes um, someone ahead of time can have picked up that the, your credentials, your bag, your bags, everything ahead of time for you, which is which is convenient. Um, so that's usually the case. And if that works well, then if you arrive on the let's say on the Sunday or the Monday, which is when most people are arriving, if you did not do days in the diocese, you will have your credentials and you're ready to rock and roll on Tuesday. Um, 
hopefully that's how it's going to work. <laughs> we can only hope because I know that one of the most chaotic times for anybody yes. is getting off a 10 hour flight and then jumping into a line thinking, you know, kind of like getting through a uh, passport and immigration, no, it's not. you know, it's and not customs. Good. And then you get to another line. Yeah, but this no, is your credentials just to attend the events. And sometimes that a line can go really fast. And sometimes they might not find your credentials. And sometimes they will. It just takes a little time, a lot of yeah, patience. It does. It does. Now, if I can, if I just say, because we just had a papal visit in Canada, as you know. Yes. And uh, the, we, it was a very similar thing. So so let's say the, the for the events that took place around Edmonton, Alberta, we had the Edmonton Conference Center. And people knew that on, you know, on these three days over the weekend before the Pope arrived, they could go to the conference center and pick up their, their badges. And it was fairly well organized. It didn't seem to me at all that it was very busy. Um, people were coming throughout the day, picking up their credentials. And the committee was very smart in that they had tons of extra ones. So if someone came in and they're like, oh, we, we actually have 30 people instead of 25 in our group. What do we do? And they were like, here, here's five more badges. Yeah. Um, at one point, I asked for one just to have some in my bag. And the, the director of the department said, here, why don't you just take 10? And then you have them so that if you encounter people on the way and they're lost and they don't know where they're going or they don't know where to get how to get in or they didn't make it to the conference center, you can just give them their badge. Because at that point, you just trust that. I mean, it's free. So people just yeah. want to attend the event, right? Um, having, having a badge is really about security measures. It has nothing to do with like, you know, having you not participate in the events. I mean, obviously we want you to participate in the events, especially when the Holy Father does make a trip anywhere in the world. But just be aware, like the reason why they wear a badge is for security's sake. It's also to keep mindful that in, in the case something does happen, you know, on the back of the badge, there's always like an emergency number, a contact where you're located, especially if you're staying you're at staying. a hotel or a, um, you know, one of those uh, host families especially if you don't know the lingo. It's always important to have this on you at yes, all times, especially it especially if there's an emergency. Yeah. I, in most cases, right? Sorry to interrupt. In most cases, oh, that badge, that badge is going to get you into the, into public transit. Yes. Um, so it's very, very handy to have. So don't <laughs> don't lose it. Uh, <laughs> and, and Dario mentioned the security measures. I mean, it, it also has to do with access. So I know the situation that we had in Madrid in 2011, where there were so many X number of people that fit into the site. Yes. And after that capacity was filled, and unfortunately uh, in Madrid, it was filled by people who, I don't know, were not accredited uh, um, because it's a it's a safety issue. So yeah. if, if we can only have 1.5 million people, we can't have 2 million people because that just becomes an issue, uh, a, a, not just a security issue, but a safety issue. So, so the committee needs to have a sense of how many people are going to attend in case they need to make it accessible to more people. And, and don't forget too, in Brazil, they didn't expect that the final mass would be held at the no. beach where the events were. So credentials weren't even looked at. And then all of a sudden they realized they were not equipped with four, almost 3.5 million people that showed yeah. up there. The bathroom situation was a nightmare. The spacing situation was a nightmare. I mean, you were literally, you know, shoulder to shoulder with everybody, yeah. uh, but it was, it was still a beautiful event. Yeah. The chaos yeah. is the means to the end. But th let's not forget that, you know, we, there will be chaos. There will be, excitement there will be joy when you're you're there you're getting in line you're getting you know sweaty probably because of the heat luckily in lisbon you don't have to worry my friends because it's really close to the water so you're going to get that nice breeze coming from the atlantic ocean that will breeze right through the city Good. and through the, through the river but you're still it's still going to be hot people are still going to be tired people yeah, are still, still going to be frustrated still but remember broke, yeah. means yes. to an end Right, exactly. means to an end. Good, good chaos. Good yes, chaos. <laughs> but you know, now that you're a year away from preparing for this trip, you know th these are things to keep in mind. But the spiritual preparation, the spiritual preparation needs to be key. What would you suggest, Deacon Pedro, would be like the the thing to do now? Like where registration has not fully happened yet. People are starting to gather in groups. They're starting to get excited. They're starting to sign up for like a tour operators. They're trying to figure out flight situation because now you can. What would be the spiritual preparation for someone preparing for World Youth Day now versus like what it will be like six months from now? Yeah. So before you even begin the spiritual preparation, if you have not, if you think in your parish that you'd like to take a group and you haven't started, 
even though registrations are not available. Maybe you already spoke to a tour operator. The tour operator, there's only so much that they can do a year out. They can probably start booking accommodation. If you're not going to do simple accommodation, they can probably start doing that now and even flights, but some of them will not want to book this early. Um, um, have a session in your parish, invite someone who has attended a previous World Youth Day to share their experience, and then invite all the young adults that you can see. All those young adults that you see at Mass that you don't even know their names, just go up to them, give them a little card and say, hey, have you heard of World Youth Day? Come on Tuesday night, here's an information session. Get as many people and then give them all the information or as much information as you can with stories that that previous pilgrim that shared his or her experience, start there. And then I would say, and this is like going to be the simplest, simplest preparation, but every World Youth Day has a prayer and Lisbon already has an official prayer. Yes, yeah. Start every gathering that you do with that prayer and every gathering that you do with that prayer. And you'll, you'll see that the more you pray it, there are themes that are coming out, right? So the theme of this World Youth Day obviously is that Mary went with haste. So, of course, that's all over the prayer. But what does it mean to go with haste? What does it mean to, to be in a hurry without distractions? What does it mean to be ready? What does it mean to do it with joy? What does it mean to go peacefully? Um, <laughs> what does it mean that Mary encounters Elizabeth in the visitation? Some people don't call that the visitation, but they call it the recognition because, because Mary is being recognized by, by Elizabeth and John the Baptist. So there's a lot of themes that you can find in just the theme of World Youth Day, and you can find a lot of those in the prayer. So I would start with the prayer and then see where that takes you. Um, now, the, the, the website already has a catechesis. They're calling it Catechesis Rise Up. Um, and there's already, and this is all in English, there's already gr a group leader's guidebook, and there are PDFs that you can download. Uh, there are nine PDFs, so that will, should last you for at least nine meetings. So there's, there's information there already that you can start implementing. And again, you can follow them kind of by the letter, word by word, or you can, you can adapt them according to your own needs. Uh, so, so there's information there. And, and we've said this before, I know Dario's going to agree. This is the more important preparation, booking flights and booking hotel rooms and getting registered and all that is important. But this is going to be ultimately the more important one. Um, that's going to ensure that you and your pilgrims have a fruitful experience of World Youth Day. Because it is a pilgrimage. I mean, we have to remember that. It's not simply going sightseeing at a new country, although that will happen. Mm -hmm. It's not the primary objective. There's stuff on our website as well on worldyouthday.com that I highly encourage any of you guys who are looking for like right. materials as well, especially for those for English speaking pilgrims that, that, that you, can, you can start there. Um, you know, I would also say the the most key thing for any leader to do who wants to take a group to go, as Deacon Pedro mentioned, is actually approach people. You'd be surprised. Right. Some people would tell you that I didn't know about it because no one told me about it yeah. or no one shared with me that this was even an opportunity for me to go. It's such an amazing thing to be invited to go up to our random, you know, a person who's sitting next to us at, at our parish, you know, or in our community or our Newman centers or in the uh, in college campuses and just go up to them and say, hey, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of taking a group to World Youth Day. Will you join me and call them out by name? You know, it's almost like that beautiful image of the apostles, right? Being called out by name, you know, hey, James, will you join me in coming to World Youth Day with me? Uh, Lisbon 2023, August 1st through the 6th. Obviously, we're going to try to go a little earlier. And then, you know, if you want to stay a little later, we're going to do the Camino Portuguesis. We're going to walk from Lisbon to Santiago de Compostela. Why not? Right? Just things like this. I, it, it's an adventure, but yet it's a pilgrimage. Uh, it's the adventure of knowing that you're, you're in a, um, in, in this, a, you know, trip that you don't know the, you don't know what to expect, but yet God will do wonders. And yes, spiritual preparation is at the core of it all. I mean, we got to go to confession, got to go to the Eucharist, got to be able to be in a state of grace, always and prayerfully prepare. So that way, when the moment comes, the graces will flow and you will feel the power as what we heard in Sydney, Australia, right? The, the power, power of the Holy power. Spirit, right? What, what an amazing uh, gift that World Youth Day was and every World Youth Day since. 
uh, even from the first World Youth Day that we look back, you know, almost 35 years ago when our Holy Father, St. John Paul II, had this great vision to bring young people together. And here we are, um, you know, and that was the that was the theme, by the way, of World Youth Day in Panama. Here I am, mm -hmm. the handmaid of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So the whole aspect of here we are, we've had a little bit of uh, isolation period, a little bit of uh, coming out period of uh, coming from this pandemic, but now it's time to begin a new adventure, a fresh adventure, uh, yeah. an adventure that seeks a purpose, right? When when Elizabeth uh, when when Mary went to Elizabeth with haste, she had a purpose. She wanted she wanted her cousin to know. <laughs> it's kind of like what we have to remind ourselves. We should be doing this to our peers, our friends, our you know anyone around us. Invite them all to this amazing event. Yeah, we're a year out, but it's also an opportunity to realize it's not too late to sign up. It's not too late to organize a group. It's not uh, too late to think that you can fundraise. Um, ideally, financially speaking, for anybody coming from a first world country, what would you say would be the ideal number? Like, what would be the, fun, the, the price tag on a world you think like this? And obviously, we're, we're, we're not focusing only on the financial element of it. Yeah, there is a part where you have to think of like flight, you have to think of lodging if you're using hotels and so on. But what do you think uh, Deacon Peter would be like uh, an ideal number for someone to fundraise and to pay for themselves? Yeah, I think it depends. Obviously, it depends the the world. So the, the World Youth Day will charge you a, a registration fee, and that fee will include the those admission passes that we were talking about. Um, and if you choose to, it will include simple accommodation. So that is staying in a school or uh, or a parish hall, usually sleeping on the floor. Um, and it will include the meals, and it should include meals for all the days. Sometimes it doesn't, but at least from the Tuesday to six days, Tuesday to Sunday. <laughs> yes. Um, so, and that fee, it's usually no more than three, I think it's been as high as 400 US dollars, but maybe 300 US dollars could be 500 US dollars, which is a great deal if you're including that it's admission to all the events, as well as meals and, uh, accommodation don't forget now, transportation of, as well and, and sorry yes and transportation ex exactly transportation because it'll have public transit usually um sometimes they'll set up shuttles in, in some places but but usually it's it's public transit um so then the only thing you have to add on to that is your flights and if you're traveling from north america to lisbon i mean at the most it'll be a thousand dollars it's you can get six hundred dollar tickets um so the larger your group the also the better price you're going to get um, it's a little more uh, challenging for people that are traveling from Latin America or, or, or Asia, obviously. Um, so I would say that between $1,500 and $2,000, depending on whether you choose the simple accommodations or you choose to stay in a hotel um, or a, or a B Airbnb or, or something like that, I guess people are, are going to be doing that at this World Youth Day now. That didn't used to be a thing in previous World Youth Days. Um, uh i think that that's probably fair so it's not for most people in north america that's not a huge amount um i do know that it's a it's a it's a it's a huge amount for a lot of people um but, but it's not an amount that you can't fundraise in true in, in but you're also forgetting that we're also in a, in a world UT is sometimes there's planes that gal the airlines gouge a little bit that's how they make their profit. They know there's a world youth day going on in Lisbon. They're yeah, going to be and they, uh, they should. I mean, there was a, I was having this conversation just <laughs> two weeks ago, actually, because for the papal visit, we ended up having to charter flights uh, oh, for wow. staff and for some because there were just not direct flights to the places where we needed to go to. And no, that's not a bad idea. So I don't know if if someone was asking me, why doesn't the USCCB just charter? You know, if the USCCB knows that there's going to be I don't know, 40,000 yeah, 40, US pilgrims traveling to World Youth Day, then why don't they charter a whole bunch of flights and and uh, and do it that way? I know that's a huge commitment for for the USCCB, but but that maybe that's an option if you have I mean if if there are a thousand people that are going, you can fill two planes. It might not be a bad way to do it. It's a little more organization that that's required. Um uh, but I know that uh that uh I think that that has been done. It has um, been done in the past, but then the worry, I think there was one organization that did that and then the company went out of business. Yeah. In the middle of World Youth Day. <laughs> oh, 
Nice. Yeah, something like that. And then there's always the, the cruise the cruise ship option. And, and I think <laughs> right. in Lisbon, that'll be an option because it's a port city. So That's maybe right. some people want to, you know, just get cruise a your way there. And, it was and, it was like I remember just remember sister um, who was it that we had Natalie Natalie yes, Natalie cruising from Paris sailing. yeah from Paris so it's a short sail from Paris to Lisbon but right yeah but maybe uh, somebody wants to go from North America I don't know take a sailboat and go well you know the the most important thing is realize that uh, the, you know the logistics don't have to be all on your end you can always ask someone yes. to take care of that for you I mean it's it, it could it could be that way it might be a little bit more expensive. But at least it takes away the logistical nightmare that might have to come with you planning it and planning exactly, all exactly exactly. And again, if you're if you feel that you're alone in your parish trying to organize a group, make sure that you have someone that's only going to take care of logistics. Yes. Get someone that's only going to going to help you with registrations and and dealing with all the money, and then you can worry about the spiritual stuff. And maybe you don't feel comfortable with the spiritual stuff. Then get someone that can help you with the spiritual stuff and i'm going to recommend that that person is not your pastor or your deacon give it to a lay person lay people can be in charge of spiritual stuff um and then have your pastor obviously be there or your deacon or your or an associate pastor to to, to support you know it's good for them to be there for meetings and to support you as you go but they don't have to be part of organizing things but if you if you spread the if you spread the the tasks then then uh it's a little easier on everybody as well and the other thing i'm sorry the last thing i'm gonna say is, is make sure that don't the, i'm not gonna say don't bring teenagers but world youth day is not for teenagers this is a great opportunity that. it's a great opportunity for all your young adults that are in university or yeah. just oh, even older than university 25 26 27 year olds that's the age group that falls through the cracks they left home they went to university and they stopped going to church until they get married or until they baptize their kids. So so those are the people. And I know in my parish, they're there. They come to Mass. I just don't know who they are. I don't know their names. We, we need to go and find out who they are and invite them. So that that would be that would be the, the you know, Dario was talking about having a purpose. That's your purpose. Like, what a great opportunity to evangelize, to reach out to that particular age group. You know, and I think Deacon Pedro also, by meaning it, talk to the a lay person doing it, it doesn't mean that we don't want a priest or a deacon to help out. It means that there is so much going on in the parish. The fact that you're taking the initiatives allows exactly. the priest to say, wow, yes, please do it. I, I need your help. And then the nice thing is that he will always be there to support you because he knows that you're taking Absolutely. the Absolutely. You know what I did? And, I, and I, I haven't, it hasn't worked out yet, but I approach a young man in my parish He's always there. I know that he's in a transition period of his life. He's, I think, in mid, mid-20s. mid And I asked him, first of all, I asked him, had you ever been to a World Youth Day? He's never been to a World Youth Day. So not only did I invite him, but I gave him a task. I said, do you want to help me organize a group? You know, can you, can you help me identify young adults from this parish, whether you know them or not, that we can invite? And so I've gave him a task. I gave him something to do. And I think that that's going to be a great help for us. I can't do it all by myself, um, but it's also going to help him by giving him a purpose. So maybe you can, you can find specific young adults and give them tasks. It's like, hey, can you help me with logistics? Hey, can you help me by reaching out to young people that you know? Hey, can you help me with, with uh, I don't know, music? I don't know, for your meetings. Uh, and then and then you start giving people a purpose. So the purpose is not just going to World Youth Day, but they have a very specific purpose in helping you prepare the group. Well, thank you, Deacon Pedro, for sharing that, because that's very important to remember, especially now as we are trying to get things organized. My friends, we will continue this uh, discussion in our next show, as especially as we move on to looking at more things that we could do to prepare spiritually, uh, financially, physically, emotionally psychologically there's so many things that we could do to prepare but yes. the, the nice thing is get ready we are one year away if get you're ready. not already set up with a group get set up if you're not already sure whether you're going this is the time to really this discern is this is and the time again lisboa 
lisbon2023.org. If you can't remember that, just Google Lisbon 2023 or go to worldute.com. And I'm sure the link is there, right, Dario? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The 20th anniversary of uh, World Youth Day in Canada, I can't tell you how many fruits have come from that. Imagine like the fruits that will come from your experience yes. in Lisbon in 2023. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for joining us for this show. We will have another one coming up very soon from all of us at worldyouth.com and uh, wydcentral.org. Thank you for joining us. Take care and God bless all of you. Take care. God bless.